you are going to start um, watching a screencast on chemical reactions, it's your introduction to chemical equations. So, so far, you, you, you know, in chemistry, we have our own language, chemists do. And just like in any language, you have to first learn the alphabet, which you have. You've learned that from the periodic table, all the letters that make up these words. And then the last unit, you learn how to create the words, the chemical formulas, the ionic compounds that we were working on. So now you're going to take those letters and words, and just like in any other language, you are going to start forming sentences. And those sentences are your chemical equations. They're sentences that describe changes using numbers, symbols, and the chemical formulas. So they describe what happens when a substance changes. Matter changes all the time, but the atoms that make up the matter are always there. So it allows us to make predictions on what we might observe when substances are mixed. So we're going to start off with just interpreting chemical equations. So what happens if you ingest chromium metal and it reacts with the hydrochloric acid in the stomach? So right now, what happens is, is you somehow ingested chromium metal into hydrochloric acid, which is um, in your stomach. These two things right here make up your reactants, the substances that you start with. Then, when they get all mixed together, kind of like when you are baking, you mix all your ingredients together, you come out with a product. Same here. And those are shown on the right side of your arrow. So everything on the left side of your arrow is what goes into the mixture, into the substances, your reactants, and anything that comes out is called your products, and those are on the right side of your arrow. You will also notice, not only do you have the chemical formulas, you have these little um, symbols, A, Q, S, A, Q, G. What those do are represent the phases or the states that you are going to find those um, substances in. So, for instance, the S is for solid, the L stands for liquid, the G for gas, and AQ is an aqueous solution, so it's dissolved in water. You will also notice that sometimes there are large numbers in front of the formulas, and those are put there when we start to balance out equations, and you'll see that in the next screencast. But what this is saying here is that it requires twice as much hydrochloric acid than it does chromium atoms for this reaction to occur to its fullest. So interpreting chemical equations, continue. Um, when we look at a chemical equation, you look at the products, and these symbols here the, that tells us the states that they are in, the A, Q, and G, helps us make predictions on what we should observe. So according to this equation, we should see the production of an aqueous solution and some type of bubbles and gas production. So that's what you would expect to happen or you would expect to observe. Then once we run the equation, or run the reaction, I should say, you then can make an interpretation. The interpretation is putting it into words, what ha you have observed. So we have, if you look at this, hydrochloric acid in aqueous solution reacts with um, solid chromium to produce chromium-2 chloride solution and bubbles of hydrogen gas. So again, here's the observations basically what you should see in your products, and then the interpretation is placing it into words. We've also talked about physical and chemical changes in previous units. Well, these are also shown in the chemical equations themselves. Physical changes, just a recap, um, it shows that there's no change in the identity, but there may be a phase change. So there's only one substance involved. You'll see the same substance in your reactants as you do in the products. What you're going to notice is a change in the phase. So, oops, sorry. So if you look here, we have water in my reactants. We also have water in the products. What you see a difference in is the phase. We have it in liquid, and in the products, it's a solid. So it went from a liquid to a solid. Here we have bromine in our reactants and bromine in our products. However, it goes from a liquid to a gas. So when you have the same substance on 
your reactants and your products, but it changed a phase, it is a chemical change. Whereas, oh, I'm sorry, physical change. Whereas chemical changes is when a new substance is created. So the reactants um, on the left side of the arrow are going to be completely different than those chemical formulas seen on the right side of your arrow. So if you look here, we have solid sodium reacting with chlorine gas to produce sodium chloride solid. So your reactants are different than your products. So a new substance was formed. Also the properties of your reactants and your products are completely different. In a properly balanced chemical equation, you're going to see the conservation of mass. Because atoms are forever. They're just rearranged when they undergo a physical or chemical change. So the mass in your reactants should equal the mass of your product. So how do you go about testing that or, or finding that out? So we have this example of the production of water. We have hydrogen gas reacting with oxygen to produce water. Here's a hint. To figure out the mass of each element, you take the subscript times the coefficient, and that will equal the number of atoms. So the number of atoms, if we look at hydrogen, you have a coefficient of 2 and a subscript of 2, so that would be 2 times 2 gives me 4 atoms, times the mass found on the periodic table, which is 1.01, give me 4.04. .04. For oxygen, we have the subscript of 2, and the coefficient is 1, so we only have 2 atoms of oxygen times the mass, which is 16, found on the periodic table, giving me um, the mass of 32 grams for oxygen. You add these two t numbers together, and you get the total mass of 36.04 grams for your reactants. You then do the same thing for your products. You look at the hydrogen. You have 2 coefficient and 2 subscripts, so 2 times 2 gives me 4 atoms of hydrogen times the mass found on the periodic table, giving me 4.04. .04. Again, with oxygen, you have a coefficient of 2, a subscript of 1, so we have 2 atoms of oxygen times the mass of 16 gives me 32, and when you add them together, it's 36.04. .04. So the total mass of your reactants equals the total mass of your products. So you have the conservation of mass when you have a properly balanced chemical equation. Now it's going to be your turn. Here's um, a scenario. Poisoning with mercury chloride, as we know, mercury can be a toxic substance and can be reversed by chelation. So for people who um, somehow get chlora, um, mercury into their system by ingesting it, they will use a chelating agent that actually draws the mercury out of the bloodstream. And they will inject that in there, and what it happens, it attracts the mercury ions to it and allows it to get removed through the kidneys. Here is the chemical equation for that reaction. So what I want you to do, and you may have to look at your previous slides, is write an interpretation in words and also tell me what you expect to observe. Bring this to class with you tomorrow, and along with any questions, and that will end our screencast for today.